Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to uh, look into our next chapter which is uh, chapter 6. So in this chapter we are going to learn on the uh, shift register and step sequence. So here are the contents that you are going to learn today. So at the end of the uh, chapter you are going to uh, understand what is shift register and how to use it in your logo uh, simulation program and then you know how to design uh, the process of your program uh, by looking at its step sequence. So we start with our first uh, subtopic, uh, the shift register. So shift register is usually uh, used in many uh, PLC or automation application. So the term register is used for an electronic device in which data can be stored or in which the group of this data uh, can be registered in a series of bits. Okay, so in PLC, usually the internal relay, flag, or memory uh, is used to store the data either in bit, byte, or word. So this uh, shift register is a number of flags grouped together. Okay, this number of flags are grouped together, which allows stored bits to be shifted from one flag to another. Okay, so uh, this bit is going to be shifted from one uh, bit location to another bit location. So we use this as a register or group of registers to form a flex, uh, which is uh, forming a train of bits, uh, either in byte, word or long word. So for example, uh, in this figure, this is a byte orientation of the uh, shift register which it contains 8 bits of data uh, with uh, the starting of the least significant bits here towards the most significant bit at the end so it has 8 uh, location okay to put uh, this shifted bit each of the flag is either effectively on or off depending on the on the input from the outside the term bit is used for each such binary digit and therefore, if we have flag in the register, we can store it uh, from bit 1 to bit 8 with the value of on or off. This is example, okay? So you have a 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 here. So it is stored in this uh, data register, which is the shift register. So with the shift register, it allows us to shift this bit to the left from the least significant bit to the most significant bit here or to the right okay where you have an input at the msb here and then this data or this bit will be shifted out to the right and then usually uh, the shift register requires three inputs the first one uh, to load the data into the first location of the register okay then and then the second input is the command to shift that data uh, from one location to another and then the third input is to reset or clear this data register. So if the input command to the shift is received then the input signal enter the first location. So uh, if you can see from this diagram so if you are going to shift left so the first data will be inserted into this LSB location. Okay, if you're going to have a right shifting, then this data will be inserted first in the first location of the MSB bit here. And then this bit will be shifted along uh, in this register from one location to another from here. Okay, this is for left shifting and this is for right shifting. So it will be shifted from one location to another. So let us see this example. Okay, this is a shift, uh, right shift register, which is uh, uh, going to shift uh, the bit in the right direction. So, the data went in, this is the input data, before the shifting process started. So, it will be uh, located in the first location of this register, which is here. Okay, and then when the shift uh, input uh, is activated, so this data will be shifted to the next location and then the next data will be inserted okay and so on so this bit will be shifted here so it will be shifted right okay until 
towards the end of location, which it will be uh, produced, I mean, which it will be taken as the output and then it will be flushed out. So you can see in the timing diagram here, so how the data is shifted from one location to another. So you have an input here. So this is the input here. Okay, and then you have a trigger which uh, to activate this shift register. So once the trigger is activated, okay, when there is a activity, when there is an activity of going from low to high and then low again, okay, with a pulse of trigger here. So this data will be shifted to the next location here, okay, and then it will receive another trigger input and then it will be shifted again to until towards the end. So in your logo, the shift up is actually uh, the right direction of shift, while the shift down is the direction to the left shifting process. So this is one of the application of the shift register in the automation. Imagine that you have a series of input here or a series of items on this conveyor belt. Okay, and then this sensor A will detect any object uh, that is defect, for example. Okay, and then when this object is detected, so it will be uh, give a signal to the rejection sta uh, station, okay, which uh, will blow this item out from this conveyor belt. So in order uh, for this system uh, to know which item need to be blow off, it must know which data is detected from the sensor and therefore it is going to use a register to register this input. So this is the shift register here. So we will see this uh, simulation. You can see the defect item uh, will be registered in that shift register. So whenever the rejection station receives this bit, from that uh, shift register, it will blow off the defect item. Okay, you can see it again from the simulation. Okay, so when the de it detects the defect item, it will be registered in the shift register. And then when this uh, rejection station receives the input from the shift register, it will blow off the item from the conveyor belt. So this is one example where the shift register is used in the automation system. So here is the shift register that you are going to use in the logo. Okay, it has uh, three inputs here. In, trigger and direction. And then it has a parameter. So this parameter you can uh, define it in the logo. Okay. So the shift register in the logo will read the input value and then it will shift the bits. Okay, so the output value corresponds with the configured shift register bit. So either it is uh, for right register or left register. So the shift direction can be changed at a special input. So here is the, is the connection that you need to connect the pin to the shift register here. There's an input here, which its function is to reach the input value here. Okay, you have an input value here. And then this is trigger. So the trigger uh, will start this shift register. Okay, when this shift register uh, detects a positive edge of the trigger input or trigger pulse, then it will start the shifting process. So the direction will determine whether this shift register is going to be shifted in left direction or right direction. So when the input direction is zero, it will be shifted to right direction. Okay, so in logo, uh, we will see later how does it organize the bits in that register. Eh? And then this parameter, okay, you can set it in the shift register later. I will show you in the logo. And then the output queue will correspond uh, to the registered bit that has been flushed out from this uh, shift register. So this is how uh, the shift register uh, is being uh, configured in the logo. So S1 is the MSB. Okay, and then, and then S8 is a LSB. If you put the direction 0, so it will be shifted up or shift to the right, okay, from S1 to S8. If you put the direction S1, it will be shift down 
or shift to the left from S8 to S1. So meaning that during the shift up operation, the first data will be put into this first location. So for shift down, the, the, the first data will be put it here. This is the first location of the shift down operation. This is the process of the shift register in the logo. So the function first reads the value input in with a positive edge 0 to 1 transition at input trigger. Okay, and then when it found the input trigger, uh, it will be shift the data in the register by looking at the direction of the uh, of the shift register. Either it is going to be shift up or shift down. And then the Q will, will correspond uh, to the value that has been flushed out from the end of the shift register. We'll look into detail into this uh, ladder logic diagram. So here is the detail of the ladder logic diagram of a shift register to be used in a logo. So you have three input here. So data what data, uh, this data in at the 0 or 1, which is specified by uh, the application. Okay. And then the, this is the shift button. This is uh, a trigger. And then this is a shift moment. This is the direction. So you have to remember, 0 is for right shift and 1 is for left shift. This is an example of one uh, usage of the shift register in the automation system, which is in a palletizing. Palletizing is a process uh, of placing a product on a pallet for shipment or storage in logistic supply chains. Okay, So normally, the products are stacked uh, in a pattern uh, that will maximize uh, that you can maximize the number of products in that one load uh, by stacking it from uh, one to another. So during this palletizing process, a shift register is used because uh, they want to shift uh, the number of products in one pallet. So they want to count. Okay, instead of uh, counting, they actually can uh, use a shift register. Okay, be, uh, because when there is a pallet uh, palletizing process, so when uh, the number of the maximum items has been um, identified by the system, so it will hold the system uh, for a certain time uh, to wrap or to to stack the item first before it let uh, another batch coming in. Okay, and therefore uh, it will use a shift register, okay, to uh, to monitor this activity by using this shift register. So first, uh, it will uh, when the sensor detects the first item arrive at that uh, certain point, so it will be uh, shifted. This data will be shifted in the first uh, location of the of that shift register. Okay, and then when the second item uh, arrive at that exact point, so the first item will be shifted to the next location. Okay, and then the the the, the next item will be registered in the first location and so on until towards the end okay so uh, this is where uh, a shift register is used in that automation system okay because uh, it will delay it will give some delay uh, to the process before the next process can be started so i hope that uh, this explanation can give you some overview on what is the main process that happens in the shift register you have to remember that uh, for that data to be shifted from one location to another, an input trigger is needed to start that shifting operation. And then uh, the direction of this uh, shift register is determined either in left or right direction. And then you need to understand if for the uh, left direction, so the first data will be located in the LSB location. Okay, so if uh, you want to have a right direction, and then the first data will be uh, loaded into the MSB location. I will show you this example from this exercise by using the logo simulation application. So in this exercise A, the question asks you to switch on the output when the first event of output 1 is detected okay and then the output 2 uh, will be switched on if the second event is detected the third one uh, when the third event is detected and so on 
Okay, and then every time one output uh, is switched on, the other outputs will be turned off or switched off. So we're going to use a shift register uh, to do this exercise. From the logo simulation application, you can choose the shift register under the Michelin linear section. Okay, and then you drag it into your ladder logic diagram workspace and then you can configure it. Okay, by right clicking it. So you just put one in the shift register index and then one in the shift register bit at the output connector. So meaning that you're going to fetch uh, one bit at the end of the register. So here is the data in, which is the input data, for example, coming from a sensor. And then this is the trigger input where you will instruct uh, this shift regist register to shift that data. And then this is the direction. Okay, you have to remember that if the direction is zero, meaning that it's going to be right shifting. If one, it's going to be left shifting. And then this is the output. Okay, so the output one is connected to the input of the first event of the shift register. So let's say the first event of a, of a shift register is located in the first bit of that shift register. So uh, you can choose it, okay, from the input okay for example you can choose it here looking at the shift register okay so s1.1 meaning that this is the first register and then you are going to choose the first bit of that shift register which uh, represent the first event of that process okay and then the second bit of the shift register we represent the second event, the third one, third event, and then the fourth one, fourth event. So each of this event will switch on the output, okay, particularly. And then uh, let us simulate it. So right now, the input trigger to this register, shift register, is not activated. Okay, and then let's say you have a sensor here which detect uh, the defect item on the conveyor belt for example okay and then if you're going to use a right shifting okay so meaning that you're going to shift from msb to lsb so you have to make sure the direction here is zero okay and then uh, when the shift is triggered Okay, so meaning that the first uh, input has been located in the first event of that re shift register, which will switch on the first output. Okay, and then it will be shifted again. So it will go to the second event. And then the second output will be switched on. And then when you press... Uh, the input trigger again so it will go to the third and so on until fourth alright so what happened if you change the direction you can see here when you change the direction here meaning that you put one so it is going to shift from right to left okay and then you put the trigger you can see the data is shifted to the left direction all right so hopefully that you can see the data transmission which is actually uh, defined by the direction of the shift register either to left or, or right direction and then this data will be shifted from one location to another when the input trigger is being pressed or turned on. Now we move to step sequence. So what is a step sequence? So to illustrate how a sequence steps are derived in a PLC, so let us look at the sequence of events that is required for a common household process. For example, like when you're going to take your morning breakfast daily. So before you start your breakfast first, Okay, you need to have a bowl and a spoon. 
and after that you need to reach the cereal okay so once you have the cereal then you need to have a milk then you take the milk from the refrigerator for example that is just the third, uh, the third process and then in the fourth process you have to pour uh, the cereal into the bowl once you have done this fourth step then you need to fill up the milk into the bowl okay and then when you uh, have some certain amount of milk that has been poured into the bowl then the next step is you prepare this bowl okay and then the last step is you eat the cereal uh, from the bowl by using the spoon so these are the step sequence to automate an industrial process with the sequence we use the same concept as a breakfast just now the complexity of the sequence ladder logic program will depend on the specific process outcomes required okay even though with that breakfast uh, preparation example just now some of the steps can be broken down even further okay for example maybe you want to position the spoon and bowl at which table for example you add another uh, process to that uh, breakfast preparation or maybe you add another process which is you want to heat up the milk first because you like to uh, to have your cereal with a warm milk so you add another process it is actually similar to PLC in PLC so the sequence control of the PLC can be differentiated between two controls the first one is the process and then the second one is the time so the process dependent control uh, which enable the transition of the conditions of the transition of the steps for the next step are prescribed by the process to be controlled okay well, in the time-dependent control, the step enabling or transition conditions for the next step are prescribed by timer function. So, for process-dependent control, just like what we have looked into our example before this, which is the cereal, uh, the making cereal process in the in, uh, during your breakfast. So, it is actually a process-dependent control. Okay, you have to do that process uh, by process. Okay, you have to. Uh, before you can move to the next process, you have to finish uh, the current process first. Okay, but the other uh, dependent control is by using a timer. So, for example, if you are using uh, the same example just now, so to prepare for the first process of your breakfast, uh, maybe you need one minute. Okay, to 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 find the cereal, for example. So after one minute, uh, you move to the next process. Okay, which uh, will be executed in a two minutes, for example. So that is a time-dependent control. This is the step sequence diagram, which consists of a few individual steps. And then each of the steps uh, will be set or activated after one another and after the conditions met. Okay, so you have an initial conditions here, and then you have a step here. So in step one, it will start the process by looking at the conditions for example uh, the button or sensors okay and then in this step one what are the command to be met uh, at this step is it going to light a bulb or is it going to uh, turn on a buzzer so that are the type of commands or normally we call it as an output I will explain you the behavior of step sequence diagram. The first behavior is the step will be activated one by one. Then only one step will be activated at one time. The step will be set only after the conditions of that particular step are met. And the previous step was already set up. So meaning that you have to make sure the previous step has finished or completed before you move to the next step. Once the step is set, the previous step will be reset. Okay, because you can only have one step at a time. Each step produce the output commands. When the step is set, the output will give out signal 1. The conditions of a step could be processed 
or time dependent but most of the time are mixed okay it either can be process or timer or it can be both process and timer depends on your application so this is the internal structure of a step sequence diagram for example here s1 is the input or conditions of this step and then at this step there has a reset command which you need to uh, turn off certain output okay and then in this uh, step 3 by looking at the condition s2 you are going to set m2 so if you're going to set the m2 meaning that you are going to turn on the m2 okay and then you move to the next step once the step 3 has completed so we look into this example so in step 1 hash 1 is on because it is being set here so the pb or the push button s1 is pressed to start the operation so this is the condition once the push button s1 is pressed then hash 1 is set and then once this step is completed then the next step will be started or begin so to start the step 2 you need to look into the condition of the step 2 so if the condition of s2 is activated so you will set hash 2 to on okay once this step is completed then it will be moved to the next step still looking at the condition okay so in this step the condition is from s3 so if s3 is activated or being pressed or pushed then you are going to set hash 3 okay before you start the next step you make sure that step 3 is completely done and so on so let us look at this exercise in this exercise you need to draw a step sequence diagram and then you need to write the assignment list and draw the PLC wiring diagram and write the program. So from here, this is the operation. So you have to look into the condition here. Okay, you can see the condition here. Normally the condition is basically coming from the button and sensor. So in this diagram, there are S4 is a button, input button. Okay, S1, S2 and S3 are the sensors. And then you have a reverse and forward direction so meaning that this is the uh, these are the output and then you have a coolant here so coolant is normally the output okay because it is coming from the actuator so in the first step okay the drill is in its initial condition when s1 is activated so s1 is activated so meaning that the system here is touching the upper limit switch so when S4 is pressed, the spindle on and at the same time, drill move forward at high speed. Okay, so when S4 is pressed, the, swing, the spindle is on and then it will move into the forward direction. So meaning that the actuator here is the motor. Okay. So when S2 activated, so when uh, this drill is at the uh, middle of its way so the forward movement of drill will be slow so it will reduce the speed of the drill okay and then the coolant pump is activated so you that coolant is set and then the drilling process started okay so you start the drilling process so when S3 is activated so meaning that this mo this motor is moved uh, towards the lower limit switch so the drill move in reverse direction with high speed and then the drill stops and spindle off when reaches each uh, its initial condition which is when it touches the upper limit switch and then the coolant pump off so here you can see the output or the command that you need to give at that step Okay, you can differentiate between the conditions and the command that you need to give to each of the step. So from that operation, you can come up with a step sequence diagram. 
So in the initial condition where the spindle of uh, is reset, push 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 button is pressed. So meaning that right now, uh, the condition of step one is true, and then at this step one, the command that need, that needs uh, to be uh, produced is to set the spindle, and then set the motor to forward direction. One, uh, this output, uh, once this output has have been set up, then uh, when condition S two is activated, so meaning that the step now is moving to step two. So at step two, the DC brake is reset, okay, to slow down uh, the movement of the drill, and then the coolant pump is set. So the process continue to step three when. S3 is activated and then at this step these are the conditions that need, that need to be produced. So the motor reverse is set and then uh, the DC brake is released so the motor can move up in a reverse direction and then you have to reset the forward direction as you are moving in a reverse direction and then you have to reset the coolant pump or the coolant pump is turned off. So by using the step sequence diagram, you can translate it into the ladder logic diagram easier. So hopefully that uh, both shift register and step sequence uh, has been explained well to you. And I'll see you again in the next chapter.